But knowing that Quebec's reputation for explosion, the rescue ships, instead of approaching to evacuate the stricken sub, actually pulled back. The submarine started to sink. I looked back, and in an instant the stern pitched into the water. The bow went up to the cabin, and the water was up to the cabin wall. The only thing there was to do was swim. The crew fought as best they could. The waves and wind blew the water surface and quickly tied the survivors. After each wave, there were fewer and fewer on the surface. You know, if I hadn't been here, you might have died. I don't know if I did any good or not. I mean, I assume that was stuck right in your throat. You know, that Heimlich is supposed to work. It wasn't working. I sure felt your hurting it. That probably didn't help you. Very. 
The brilliant Copus has the dole. Was one of the 35 sailors who perished. He understood it was an experiment and that it was being tested. He didn't want a servant. He had seen too much. He just didn't want to. Even today, her bitterness is barely conceived. I heard about it from the wife of a fellow sailor. She called and told me to contact some of her acquaintances to find out the details. They told me it was a catastrophe. No one called from headquarters. For years, Sergei Sidorenko tried in vain to learn what happened. When I became a student, I was interested very much about my father, my history, and I went to the Admiralty and discussed this question with a very important person from Admiralty. But nobody answered me. The Soviet government never let the world know what happened, fearing damage to the prestige of the military. To relatives, they gave the excuse that it was unnecessary to accept the phone call with bad news. What? Will you turn the soup off? I can't hear you. Will you turn the soup off? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's actually depressed me. Because I knew that if you passed out and were choking, there's no way an ambulance would ever get here in time. No. No. Huh? I can't hardly talk. Oh, okay. 